Hi guys, welcome to a channel where electronics engineering is discussed left, right and center. Your presenter is Motion Marufu and for any comments or suggestions, you can get in touch with me on motionmarufu68 gmail.com or on plus 2637175358666. Enjoy the lectures guys. Hi guys, welcome to our 3D video for electronics one. This time we are going to look at the PN junction diode and this is a series of two videos and this is the first one. A PN junction diode is simply made from a P type material and an N type material joined together and this is a basic semiconductor diode that we are going to look at. As usual, Motion Marufu is my name and let's enjoy this one. Because this is a basic electronic device, we've got a quite number of objectives and the first one is you must be able to describe with the aid of a diagram formation of the depletion layer Ident number two identify the terminals of a junction diode that is the anode and the cathode from a schematic symbol then analyze the, the schematic diagram of a simple diode circuit and determine a you must be able to determine whether the diode is conducting or not then you must also be able to to determine the direction of current flowing through the diode. Then objective number four, you must, you must be able to list the main parameters of a PN junction diode and explain how each limits the use of the component. Then the last objective is you must be able to state and describe different types of reverse, break, reverse breakdowns in diodes. Then we've got a, a prerequisite. It is assumed, guys, you have done your circuit theory, in particular, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. PN junction diode. P type and any type materials on their own are not very important in electronics. But if we join a P type material to an N type material, we form a very important basic electronic devices having one junction. Its name is called a, a diode. And practically all semiconductor devices, be they transistors, be they thyristors, to name but just a few, they have at least one junction, which is a combination of a P type and an N type materials. Because of this, it is so important that we understand the behavior of a PN junction connected in an electronic or electrical circuit. That is what we will be doing in this presentation. A recap on intrinsic and extrinsic type of semiconductors. We've got two types of ex extrinsic semiconductors, any type and P type. N stands for negative, P for positive, and in any type Majority charge carriers are electrons, while in P-type, majority charge carriers are walls. Then, the two semiconductor materials can be chemically joined or combined using special fabrication techniques to form what we are now calling a PN junction or a diode. Junction simply means where the P and the N meet, and a diode is a very popular electronic device. As we have said, it means that in a PN junction, a large number of walls are on the P side while a large number of walls are on the N side. And we also know that we have got what we call minority charge carriers. So can you determine what kind of minority charge carriers you find on the P as well as on the N side? Diode construction and diode symbol. I've said we are going to chemically join the P and N type materials using special fabrication techniques. So we have joined them. This is the P type material, this is the N type material, and where they meet this black line is what we are calling the junction. And we are saying to connect the diode or the PN junction to an external circuit, we need some external wires. And where they meet the P and the N type material, these black are what we call the ohmic contacts. And they've got very low resistance to the flow of or current. So we now have got two electrodes, electrode 1 and electrode 
two. So this is the way how a PN junction is constructed. And we, and we are saying a P-type semiconductor becomes the anode. Why? Because it is was a majority charge carrier, so it is positive. While the N-type becomes the cathode, which means negative. Why? Because it is majority charge carriers as electrons. For in electronic circuits, we use what we call schematic symbol. This is the schematic symbol of a diode, and the p-type material is the anode, while the n-type material, which is this band, you remember band, is the n-type material. So we now have got the anode and the cathode, and we are saying this arrow, the arrowhead in the symbol indicates the direction of conventional flow of current. So the current is flowing in this direction. Please, you must be able to represent the construction and also the schematic symbol of a PN junction diode. It is important to take note of the fact that we have got many types of diodes. For example, we've got zener diodes, light emitting diodes, photo diodes, signal diodes, and they also have got different symbols. What we are discussing is simply a basic PN junction diode, which in most cases is referred to as a rectifier diode. So we are saying the term diode refers to a basic PN junction diodes. And we have said that it has got two electrodes, the anode and the cathode. It conducts when forward biased and it does not conduct when reverse biased. We will be talking about that a lot in this presentation. PN junction depletion layer formation. When the P and any type materials are brought together, immediately a junction is formed. And normally the junction is at the center of the two materials or where they meet. So we've got the P region and the N region and the yellow line or the gold line represents the meeting place of the P and the N layers. So we are saying the P, the, the P and junction is formed where the two materials meet. And we are saying the white dots are representing the walls, while the red or the maroon dots, if I am correct, with the minus sign are representing the electrons. And uh, uh, please take note of these minority charge carriers on the N side and also these minority charge carriers on the P side. So we are saying osmosis is, sorry, diffusion is, is going to cause the movement of walls from the P to the N and the movement of, of electrons from the N to the P-type material. And this is going to, to give rise to what we call the, the barrier potential. And the barrier potential, you can see that we have got the plus signs on the N side and the minus signs on the P type. This is how it occurs. Due to diffusion, electrons are going to uh, cross the junction from the N type to the P type, and they are going to occupy walls, resulting in the formation of these immobile charge carriers which have got a polarity of minus. This won't move. When electrons leave this side, they are going to leave some walls, and walls we know they have got a positive sign, hence these plus signs. And we know that the polarity of a cell has got a minus and a plus, hence the blue arrow from the plus to the minus, representing the electric field. So we are saying, the plus and the minus at each side of the junction represents what we call the barrier voltage or barrier potential. And we are saying the movement of electrons from this side to this side and walls from this side to this side happens for a short period of time and the further movement is going to be stopped by the barrier potential in this way. These walls are going to repel, sorry, these plus signs are going to repel, and these minus signs are going to repel electrons. So in between the two, there are no 
charge carriers. There are no electrons, there are no holes. Hence, we call it depletion region, meaning that this region is depleted of charge carriers. Uh, that slide is explaining the formation of the depletion layer. Go through it on your own and see if it agrees with my explanation. More on the formation of the depletion layer or the barrier potential. Barrier potential is in most books represented as VB. That B stands for barrier and the V stands for voltage. So we are saying this is how VB comes about. We are saying electrons, because of diffusion, they are going to cross the, the junction, going into the P region. Where they live, they live holes, and holes are positive ends, a layer of positive charges, which we are now calling positive ions near the junction on the N region. When they cross the junction, they are going to occupy walls, and this results in the formation of negative charges or negative ions near the junction. So it means that we have got positive and negative ions or charges on the two sides of the junction as shown on the previous slide. Then the way depletion, depletion as I said, simply refers to the fact that the region near the PN junction or on each side of the PN junction are depleted of charge carriers. That is, there are no electrons and holes due to diffusion. And please take note, the depletion layer or region is formed quickly and is stopped by the formation of the barrier potential on each side of the junction. Still more on formation of B or the depletion layer and this is how the formation is going to stop. We are saying electrons are going to continue to across the depletion region as long as equilibrium has not been attained and we are saying more and more walls and electrons are going to move. They are going to cross the, the junction. Then there is going to be a point when equilibrium is going to be attained in a diffusion process and this occurs when the negative charges are going to repel any further diffusion of electrons and also the positive charges are going to repel any further diffusion of walls. In other words, the depletion layer or region acts as a barrier to further movement of electrons and walls across the junction. And because of the immobile charge carriers, which are the positive and negative ions on, e on each side of the uh, junction, an electric field is uh, created across the uh, junction. And this is a result of potential, potential difference or a voltage, which we are calling barrier potential. Potential simply means voltage. It is also known as the junction potential, built-in potential cut in voltage of a PN junction diode. VB depends on, number one, it depends on the type of semiconductor, whether it is made from silicon or germanium. It also depends on the atom that would, that would have been used to dope the semiconductor uh, crystal. That is donor impurity and also acceptor impurity. It also depends on the temperature because uh, we know that if we increase the temperature, we increase the number of charge uh, carriers. It also depends on the intrinsic concentration, uh, which depends, which refers to the number of charge carriers in any intrinsic conductor. Then we know that the diffusion for holes and electrons happens. Why? Because there is haphazard movement due to thermal agitation. So thermal agitation results in diffusion and also it is because there is a difference in a concentration in the two uh, regions that is of walls and electrons in other words we are saying the p region has more walls and less electrons and the n region has less walls and more electrons we are still looking at 
APN junction to which no voltage has been applied, hence this, the statement PN junction with no external voltage is not something new. Right? And when the two materials are joined together, one would expect walls and electrons to flow towards each other and, and combine, but this does not occur because it will eliminate all the walls and electrons. But diffusion of walls and, and electrons across the junction occurs for a very short period of time and after the imaging of the barrier, it is going to stop and the barrier is on each side of the junction. We call it a barrier because it stops further diffusion of walls and electrons across the junction. What is an electric field? This is a force between the positive and the negative, and it flows. The direction of the arrows to represent electric field is from positive to negative. Hence, if you remember on that a diagram, it was from positive to negative. We have got what we call the width of the depletion region. This is the physical distance from one side of the barrier to the other. Then we've got what we call height. This is the difference of potential from one side of the barrier also to the other. And we are saying when no applied voltage is connected, the height of the barrier is of the order of a tenth of a volt. And we've got typical values, which end is 0 0.74 a diode made from silicon and 0.3 for a PN junction made from germanium. What is the effect of VB on minority charge carriers? We know that like charges or repel and unlike charges attract. So the barrier potential assists the movement of minority charge carriers across the junction. But will this, will this result in an electric current? Certainly not. Electric current cannot flow since no external circuit has been connected to the PN junction. Therefore, we can conclude that Barrier voltage is developed across the PN junction even if no external battery is connected. PN junction with forward bias. In other words, we now want to make sure that our PN junction diode conducts. So for it to conduct, we forward bias it. So this happens. What is forward biasing? This is when the positive terminal of the applied voltage is connected to the P-type and the negative terminal of the applied voltage is connected to the N-type. The negative terminal is going to repel electrons and the positive terminal is going to repel walls. So they will all move towards the junction. If you look at Fig 1.4a, you can see that the P-type is connected to the... This P-type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery the any type is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So this is going to, this is positive, this is positive. So walls are going to be repelled and they are going to move towards the junction. Electrons are going to be repelled and they are going to move towards the junction. And this resistor is simply functioning as a current limiting resistor so that this diode is not destroyed. So in other words, we have forward bias the PN junction diode. J simply stands for the junction. But in electronics, we use schematic diagrams to represent this PN junction structure. And please take note, this is the symbol of a diode. The arrow, this arrow is the P type and this band is the N type. So in other words, you are saying this is the anode and this is the cathode. Anode is positive, hence it is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. The cathode is negative, hence it is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. R is the current limiting resistor. D simply stands for diode. So this diode is a schematic representation of this circuit connection. Operation of a forward biased a diode. I think I have highlighted that as long as the applied voltage is greater than VB, conduction will take place. 
But when it is less than, then no conduction will take place. In other words, the diode will be off or it will be reverse biased. The moment the applied voltage becomes greater than Vb, walls are repelled towards the positive, uh, are repelled by the positive terminal of the battery and the same applies to electrons. They are also repelled by the negative terminal of the battery. And that repellence is going to cause the two charge carriers to move towards the junction. In other words, they are going to cross the barrier or the depletion region. So we are saying as the electrons and walls are moving towards the junction, the width of the depletion region is going to decrease and, and also the barrier height is going to decrease. If we continue to increase the applied voltage, the depletion region is going to disappear. In other words, the walls and electrons are going to cross the junction. This movement of majority charge carriers across the junction, it results in what we call forward current since the diode is forward biased. But please take note that Current in the p-type is due to walls and current in the n-type is due to electrons. As long as the battery is connected to the circuit, current continues to flow. More on the operation of a forward bias the diode. We are saying this is the depletion region before the diode is forward biased. And after forward biasing, we are going to have the positive reflecting walls and also the negative ref reflecting electrons. In other words, walls are going to move towards the, the junction as well as electrons. They are also going to move towards the, the junction. But this happens only as long as the applied voltage is greater than Vb. Right? This is going to result in the narrowing of the depletion region. So the narrowing of the depletion region is going to result in electrons uh, crossing the junction to the p-type and walls crossing the junction to the any type resulting in current flow. And we know that electron movements and wall movements are in different direction. These electrons are coming from the negative terminal because negative terminal means an excess of electrons. So electrons are going to move in this way. And conduction through the diode is, is through both walls and electrons. And this is our current limiting resistor. Hence, if you compare this depletion region and this depletion region, you can see that this is narrow when compared to this. So we are saying the width of the depletion layer after forward biasing is narrow when compared to before forward biasing. VI characteristics of a PN junction diode. V stands for voltage and I stands for or current. So we are saying voltage current characteristics of a PN junction diode. This is the circuit that is used to derive the characteristics supply voltage is V and it is assumed to be greater than Vb. This is a resistor R. Purpose it is limiting the current through the diode. D is our PN junction diode. Vf is the forward voltage which is the voltage across the diode. Then we are going to have current flowing in this direction and this is conventional flow of current and it's called IF meaning forward current. We are saying after measuring the voltage across the diode VF and the current flowing through the diode using N ammeter, we are going to find VI characteristics. So VI characteristics of a PN junction diode simply refers to a graph of voltage across the PN junction diode against a current flowing through that PN junction diode. Our applied voltage is V and the voltage across the diode is V. F. The current flowing in the circuit is IF. So we are saying the graph that is going to be plotted is forward current against forward voltage. And we call it the forward characteristics of a PN junction diode. 
this is v this graph shows the vi characteristics and our v is vf and our i is if so we are saying if we increase the voltage v from zero up to a certain value which must not be exceeded so we are increasing from zero the value of vf we will measure current flowing through the diode and the scale is that current will be in milliamps so we are saying when the voltage is less than vb the current flowing will be zero as shown by this part it will gradually start to increase as we approach v but its value will be low when our when our voltage gets to vb we said vb is also known as cut in voltage and cut in voltage is represented by v gamma this is a symbol for gamma so we are saying when we get when this v which is our supply voltage is now equal to v gamma we are now going to have an a high flow of a current especially from there to there and as you continue to inc to increase v you will see that the voltage across the diode sorry the current through the resistor is going to increase but now it is now increasing exponentially v the voltage across the diode vf almost remains stationary to avoid damage to the diode so we are saying this point whereby uh, a fault, the amount of current flowing in the diode has increased we call it the knee it is uh, otherwise cut in voltage is also referred to as the knee voltage this part is the shape of a knee hence the name knee yes to our explanation we are saying region o to p from o to p as long as vf is less than vb a very small current is going to flow a practically zero this we know because the diode will not conduct from p to q we are saying vf as vf increases barrier a voltage keeps narrowing and when vf becomes greater than when vf now becomes greater than this cutting voltage uh, there is a sudden and exponential increase in if and this point we said it is called knee and the voltage there is called the knee voltage in explanation of the vi characteristics please take note that the independent term which is vf is plotted along the horizontal axis while the dependent term which is the current if is plotted on the y axis the normal a biased forward oper operation of the diode is after the knee point that is from p2 to q please take note that forward current is conventional current which is from positive to negative hence it is treated as a positive together with vf therefore we are going to plot forward characteristics in the first quadrant where the two terms are positive diode forward resistance this is simply the resistance offered by a forward biased pn junction diode and we've got two types the first one is static forward resistance designated r subscript f where f stands for forward r stands for resistance this is the forward resistance of a forward biased pn junction diode under dc conditions in other words when the supply voltage is dc is formula rf is equals to forward dc voltage divided by forward dc current and according to our vi characteristics that's oa divided by oc at point e then dynamic forward resistance small letter r subscript f this is the forward resistance of a pn junction diode in an ac circuit or under ac conditions in other words supply voltage is AC. In other words, it is the reciprocal of the slope of the forward resist forward characteristics, and its value is normally very very small in the ohms range above knee point. So the formula is change in VF divided by change in IF, and according to the second definition, to find the reciprocal is one divided by change in F divided 
sorry, change in IF divided by change in VF. We are now going to look at the phase biased PN junction diode. In other words, this is the way how you reverse bias a PN junction diode. This is the structure and this is the, the symbol of this PN junction diode. In other words, the negative is connected to the P type and the positive is connected to the N type and these two are going to attract, this is going to widen the depletion region. In other words, no current is going to flow. And as you can see, this is the, the anode. The, the anode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So the electrons are going to attract the walls. The cathode is connected to the positive. So the positive is going to attract the electrons. In other words, the depletion region is going to widen. This is simply how you, re, you reverse bias a, a diode. You simply connect the anode to the cathode and the cathode to the positive terminal of the battery. This is for current limiting. In other words, we are saying the walls in the P region are going to be attracted towards the negative terminal of V and electrons are also going to be attracted at the positive terminal of V. Thus, the majority carriers are drawn away from the junction, widening the depletion region and increasing VB. Effect of a reverse a biasing on the depletion region. The negative terminal of the applied voltage, as we said, is connected to the P type material, the positive to the N type material. So the positive is going to attract electrons, the solid dots, while the negative is going to attract the white dots, which are holes. See what is happening to the depletion region. We are going to have a lot of immobile positive ions as well as immobile negative ions. Please take note there are no charge carriers, no electrons or holes in the depletion region. So in other words, we are saying depletion region widens, sorry, the depletion region is widened by reverse bias of voltage. What is the effect of reverse biasing on the minority charge carriers? The electrons is going to repel, sorry, the negative terminal is going to repel electrons in the P-type material, which are the charge carriers, and also the positive is going to repel elect is going to repel walls, which are minority minority charge carriers in the N type material, and these are going to move towards the junction. In other words, they are going to to cross if you continue increasing the supply voltage V. So we are simply saying VB increases when the depletion region widens and the polarity of barrier voltage is the same as applied voltage. Take note of that. More on effect of reverse bias voltage on minority charge carriers and we are saying Minority charge carriers are generated by thermal agitation and not by applied voltage. And we are saying the charges are, are swept across the junction because of the barrier voltage. Because we are saying the negative reflects electrons in the P-type material and positive reflects or repels ones walls in the n-type material because those are the minority charge carriers. So we are saying if temperature is fixed, we have small number of minority charge carriers. And we are saying reverse current flows due to minority charge carriers, which are small also in, in number. Hence, it is very, very small. Please take note that for a constant temperature, reverse current is almost a constant even if reverse voltage is increased up to a certain limit. And because of this, it is called the reverse saturation current. Why saturation? Because even though we are increasing voltage, it remains almost constant as long as the temperature is constant, but provided that will not exceed the limit of the reverse of voltage. In other words, the typical values are nanoamps for silicon diodes and microamps for germanium diodes. Since we know that a microamp is greater than a nanoamp, it shows that germanium diodes conduct more 
than silicon diodes and this agrees with our discussion on intrins intrinsic and extrinsic even on basic semiconductor materials uh, guys this slide is very very important as examiners are interested in the two types of reverse breakdowns so i'll try to do justice we've got a limit on the amount of reverse breakdown if that is exceeded then the pn junction diode is dis is destroyed by excessive current and this is called the reverse breakdown of the diode and the voltage at which this occurs is, co is called reverse breakdown voltage at this voltage if it is exceeded the structure breaks down and when the diode is operating normally this voltage is not exceeded and we are saying there are two types of reverse breakdowns Zena breakdown and avalanche breakdown we are now going to discuss the difference between the two and i want you to take note Zena breakdown occurs when reverse bias is increased beyond the breakdown voltage this increases the electric field electric field the force between the positive and the negative at the junction and this high electric field is going to cause the covalent bonds you know the covalent bonds to break and when covalent bonds break we know we have got charge carriers that are generated this is going to cause a large current to flow mind you we had some current flowing reverse saturation current now we have gen generated more charge uh, carriers so this is going to result in a large uh, current flow and this is simply Zena uh, breakdown then avalanche occurs still we have got an increase in voltage which results in an increase in electric field but the increased electric field causes velocity of minority charge areas to increase this causes a breaking down of, of covalent, covalent uh, bonds and the breaking down of covalent bonds generate charge carriers. These charge carriers are also accelerated by the electric field that is now very high and they continue to break the covalent bonds. And this continual breaking down of covalent bonds creates a large number of charge carriers. We call this carrier multiplication and it gives rise to high reverse current. This is avalanche breakdown. A reverse breakdown voltage is the reverse voltage where avalanche or Zener breakdowns effects begin to produce large reverse current. It is also known as peak inverse voltage, PIV, peak reverse voltage, VPRV or peak reverse maximum voltage, VPRMV. They are breakdown voltage. The breakdown voltages are maximum voltages and they should not be exceeded. Just as we discussed forward VI characteristics, we are now discussing junction diode reverse VI characteristics. And these the VI characteristics are produced by a reverse biased diode. And this reverse biased and this circuit shows a reverse biased diode. Positives connected to the cathode, negatives connected to the anode. Therefore, there is not going to be any flow of majority charge carriers. The voltage across the diode, which is measured by a voltmeter connected in parallel to the diode, is called reverse voltage. And take note of the polarity of the reverse voltage. It is the same as the polarity of the reverse voltage, plus to plus and negative to negative. This for current limiting. Take note of the important points. The polarity of applied voltage this one is opposite to forward bias to that in a forward bias the second end this is referred to as negative also reverse saturation current is opposite for forward bias it was going this way for, for reverse bias it is going this way so it's now opposite 
hence it is taken as negative as well because these two are negative we are going to use the fourth we are going to use the third quadrant you know your mathematics negative a breakdown voltage which is the voltage across the diode and also a reverse current ir please take note it it is in micro amps forward current was in milli amps why because there is no flow of majority charge carriers so we are saying this voltage is going to increase up to this point then as long as vbr is not increased beyond the limit the current the reverse current will remain almost constant and it is called the reverse saturation current but when we exceed the breakdown voltage which is vbr it means that we are now going to have zena and avalanche a breakdown whereby we are going to have maximum reverse current flowing hence there is this increase a high increase in reverse current and the voltage at which this occurs is called reverse breakdown voltage vbr and we are saying voltage along this end is called reverse voltage vr in volts reverse characteristics we are now going to look at what we call reverse resistance and we have got two types reverse static resistance rr and reverse dynamic resistance rr as well you remember rr and rf this is now reverse since rr and r is a capital letter so we are saying this is reversed resistance under DC conditions where reverse dynamic resistance is reversed resistance under AC conditions. Take note of the formulas. Forward and reverse characteristics on the same graph have nothing to add. We have covered each individual. Please take note of those important terms. We have defined them and I've also explained what they mean. I've got nothing to add as well. Guys, this is the end of our 3D video of Electronics 1. Next time when we meet, we'll talk about diode, PN junction diode circuit models. Until then, guys, take care of yourself. Mind you, COVID-19 is still there. If you are benefiting from these presentations, don't forget to like and also to subscribe. This is Motion. Until we meet again, bye and God bless you.